Now, yesterday, we also lost Don Larson. Uh, a very complicated career because he was under 500. Uh, he had terrible, terrible control throughout his career. Went to a no wind-up delivery, and that kind of curtailed it a bit. But still, walked a lot of people. People remember, you know, the, the perfect game in the 1956 World Series. The previous game he started, game two, he was horrendous. Mm. He got slapped around the ballpark, and... Um, he didn't think he was going to start the rest of the series. And before he started that game in 1956, the perfect game, he got completely loaded. The guy liked to drink. Mickey Mantle said in his autobiography, I've never seen a guy with more of a capacity for liquor as Don Larson. And in those days, you knew you were starting when you came into the clubhouse and there was a ball in your shoe. And he came into the clubhouse and there was a ball in his shoe. <laughs> and if you look at that Dodger lineup, that he was able to pitch a perfect game against them, Amazing. And then the, the old story goes, Dick Young was writing two stories. Babe Pirelli, I believe, and, 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 and the, the, read Mike Vaccaro's column in the Post today. It's brilliant. Just brilliant. But Babe Pirelli was a, it was a home plate umpire, and that was his last game. He was a longtime umpire. And then Dick Young was writing another story for the Daily News. So he's writing two stories. And then the guy that was writing the story, I believe it was Joe Trimble, had writer's block. He had the typewriter there, and nothing was there. He couldn't come up with anything to write. And Dick Young just took the typewriter and write, the, the unperfect man pitched the perfect game today. And then in the later editions, it was changed to the imperfect man pitched the perfect game. And that's Don Larson. But the thing that, it, it's like when you see guys on, on, on television shows, like, uh, that, that get fame. Let's say Henry Winkler, who's not like this, who got fame for being Fonzie. And sometimes these guys, they, they, they look down their nose at it. You know, we're more than that. We're active. Don Larson embraced the fact. He told Mike Vaccaro, I'm, nobody would even know who I was if I didn't pitch that perfect game. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about it. And he handled it with such grace and class. And he lived 90 years. Yeah. And it's just, just an uh, amazing story. But Don Larson passes away yesterday at the age of 90. And, uh, again, he'll, he'll be remembered as long as baseball is played. Who, who doesn't know the name? Seriously. I mean, it, that name resonates. For a guy that was 10 games under 500, played for, what, six, seven different teams. Mm -hmm. uh, that one accomplishment 60-something years ago. Still resonates with people. It and still has amazing. not been done again. And, and the thread between the three perfect games in Yankee history, David Wells pitched one, and he went to the same high school as Don Larson, uh, Point Loma in, in San Diego. And then David Cohn the next year pitches one on Yogi Berra Day when Don Larson threw out the first pitch to Yogi Berra, and then Yogi handed the glove to Joe Girardi. And then Don Larson stayed the whole game as David Cohn pitched a perfect game. And the three of them did a lot of stuff together. I know David is brokenhearted today. Both Davids are. Uh, they, they really love Don Larson. Don Larson, the last time I saw him, was at the 20th anniversary of David Cohn's perfect game at the Mandarin Oriental here in New York. And from his seat, you can see he was struggling. Mm. He, was so, he was still so sharp and said all the smart things about perfect games and stuff like that. It was great to see him one last time. But um, rest in peace to Don Larson, rest in peace to, to David Stern. And